How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're looking at these two generators. I just had to do a video on this because uh, they're extremely similar on the amount of power that they produce, but they are extremely different in everything that they have to offer. This one here is the iGen 4500 dual fuel, and it produces uh, 4500 peak watts, I think 3700 continuous watts on gasoline. Of course, take what, 10% off for propane wattage ratings. And then this guy over here is the iGen 4200. It uh, peak watts at uh, 4200. Uh, I think continuous watts is around 3500 watts. Open frame, so it's probably going to be a little bit noisier than this one, uh, this one being enclosed. Uh, like I said, they're both inverter generators, so it will be quieter than your typical construction generator, even though it's open frame. So let's look at the uh, 4500 dual fuel first and what it has to offer. Um, we'll just start from the top and go down to the bottom and then we'll kind of run it through some tests and uh, see what they run. I imagine they'll run just about anything I can throw at them in my 30 amp RV, but uh, still be fun to test it out. So uh, obviously we can fill up the uh, gasoline up here on top, I believe. The fuel capacity is uh, just under three and a half gallons. So you can put a healthy amount of gasoline in here and they say on a quarter load, uh, it can run for around 18 hours. Now I knew a guy that uh, ran, I think 500 watts and he wanted to see how long it could do that. Um, it ran for 26 hours. And on propane, it's supposed to run a similar amount of time. I think they say uh, 15 hours or something like that, running on a uh, 20 pound bottle of propane, which is the, the smaller bottle of propane that you're traditionally used to seeing for barbecues and stuff. So on the front of the generator, we have our switch for turning the battery off and on when we're ready to start it. Um, they actually have a place where you can put a float charger on this while you have it in storage. That way when you go to pull it out, your battery's not dead and toast and you gotta go buy a new one. So they have a way that you can float charge your battery during the off season. Uh, they have the RV ready plug, which is nice not to be able to have an adapter, your standard house outlet. And then we have the, the breakers for each of those power sources on the generator. We have our fuel selector switch between uh, gasoline and propane, and then our port for plugging in the, the propane into the generator, uh, an and on off switch. Then we have our indicator lights and the switch for efficiency mode, like economy mode for the generator. Then this has quite a few places for data. It gives you like a whole data center. So if you wanted to know the remaining runtime hours, the, the power output that the generator is outputting, uh, how much fuel you have left in the uh, gasoline tank, the voltage that it's producing and an hour meter for how many hours the generator has been running. That way you know when to, when to service it. So it has just about all the bells and whistles on this generator. Oh, I almost forgot. It does have a pull start on the side and a, uh, a remote for starting the generator remotely on, on gasoline and propane. Uh, it does have a handle, so rolling it around is a piece of cake. It almost looks like a uh, suitcase kind of a handle, the way that it pops out and rolls around. Uh, I do have to be honest, this thing is a beast. It weighs quite a bit. I can get it in and out of the truck by myself, uh, but having an extra set of hands to put this, load it in and out, uh, definitely is an advantage to just heaving it up there by yourself. Now, moving over to the iGen 4200, this generator couldn't be more different in terms of features. So you have your fuel valve, a manual choke, the other one had an automatic choke. Uh, you do have an hour meter on here, which is very nice for a stripped down model. A uh, place to charge USB stuff, switch for having it on run and when you turn it off uh, for stopping it, your indicator lights, uh, reset button. Again, it has efficiency mode, uh, your standard RV plug outlet on here, standard household outlet, and then your two circuit breakers down at the bottom. There is no battery on this, so obviously remote start is out of the question. They do give you a uh, fuel gauge on top, a manual fuel gauge, so that way you know how much fuel is in here. Now the, the runtime and the power that it produces is extremely similar to the uh, iGen 4500 dual fuel. Uh, they say it can run for 18 hours on a 
quarter load, but it has a gallon less fuel capacity. So I think it's around uh, two and a half gallons of gasoline that this guy can hold. Again, this being an open frame inverter generator definitely is gonna look different than your traditional being enclosed like the 4500 dual fuel over here. Uh, but the engine size, are it's actually pretty similar between these two generators. Just a little side note and a tip, when you're looking at generators and you're trying to compare uh, what power they produce, engine size actually will tell you quite a bit. Um, if somebody's saying that they're producing a lot more wattage with a smaller engine size, chances are it's not gonna perform as well under a, a heavy load. Now, this one has a 212 cc engine and this one has a 224. And the you can see that in the watt ratings in between the two. This one's the peak watts at 4,500 and this one's peak watts at 4,200. So even just that little bit of difference in the engine size, you see that in the power output difference. So when you're comparing generators, take a look at the engine size along with the, the watt rating that that generator has. So let's fire up the 4500 first and we will turn on the AC and a few other things and see how it handles it. Okay, let me see if I can speed this up for us a little bit because I ran this test three times. Um, I did it on gas on the 4500 dual fuel and then I ran it on the other generator and then I ran it on uh, the propane side of the 4500. So was, what I did is I turned on a couple of TVs. Um, so we had those going playing stuff. I turned on a space heater and uh, we had that going and then I fired up the AC. I wanted to see how it did firing up the AC once it already had all those other loads going, because that's really the reason why you would want a generator like this is have things going and still have your AC be able to kick on. We could see that these two generators handled this typical scenario no problem at all. If we had nine to 12 amps going and then the AC kicked on, um, it was able to, to power through that. And uh, as the, that big draw happened, it was able to, to push through that because of the size of these generators. So we let them run on that power load for a little bit to see how they could sustain it, and they they did fine. So the big question with these generators is, how are they gonna do in the long run? How well are they gonna do for years and years and years? Because uh, looking at them, this has all the bells and whistles, the other one is just raw power. So um, that's the big question with these. We'll have to see how they do long term. So uh, as far as sound, I'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, the sound um, for this 4500 dual fuel was very quiet. I had a hard time hearing when it was still running outside when I was trying to run it out of gasoline. Um, I had to actually like step outside to see if it was still running at times. Um, so it was extremely quiet. The other one with the open frame, it does present some additional noise. It's like I said, better than your typical construction generator. But if I was for us on our rig, we have an Onin generator. Um, so I would probably say that the 4500 was the quietest for the generators that we usually use. Um, it's really close to that champion one. Uh, and then our Onin generator and then third coming in last place would probably be that open frame generator as far as noise. I know it's not really fair talking about the Onan generator in that mix. That's a mountable generator for your RV. These are uh, very mobile. They're still for RVing. So similar purpose, just different form factor, but they really handled well powering through that heavy uh, amp draw load that was required when that AC kicked on and got going. So let's talk about price. Uh, this one I think is around the $600 range uh, stripped down model to give you just a, a inverter generator uh, with no frills. I did notice that this thing does give you volts, frequency, and hours. So it gives you a little more information than I than I first thought there. It did run a bit louder than this guy, which was expected. Uh, the 4,500 dual fuel, I think this one goes for around $1,100. This one, in my opinion, did excellent on the sound. Um, I don't have a bunch of generators to line up side by side and test the decibel and frequency, uh, but it sounds good and it is very quiet. So really the last question to answer with these generators is 
how de dependable are they going to be? There's some generators out there that have had a really long track record and a long history of just being dependable. And these just have to show that over time. And I know there's been people out there using this brand of generators that have had great success. I know there was a version of this 4500 before the dual fuel um, that they had some issues with the automatic choke and the plug being upside down. Um, I didn't have any of those issues while testing this guy out and uh, kind of playing around with it. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention on the uh, feature list on this guy that's different than the Champion uh, that we had looked at a little bit ago is you can switch between gasoline and propane on the fly. So if you're uh, wanting to switch over from gasoline to propane, you can just flip the switch and it'll switch over or vice versa. Uh, so that was that was pretty handy. So um, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at two extremely different, extremely similar generators. And uh, so remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And uh, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you in the next video. This remote makes me think of that movie, Fun with Dick and Jane. Mercedes off. <laughs>